Today I'm going to show you three different navigation menus you can create using Elementor Pro. Hi, it's Barbara and welcome back to Wikidesign. If you're new here, this channel is all about web design tutorials, WordPress, the Elementor page builder, and running a small business. If that's something that you're interested in, please click subscribe because we make new videos here every week and we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers this year. We're in the home stretch. We have less than a thousand to go, but that's a big goal for us this year and we would love to have you join the community. Subscribing is totally free and it probably doesn't mean much to you, but it really helps us out. So thank you so much for subscribing. Today's video is all about navigation menu design. I feel like this is something that has definitely improved a lot over the past few years. People are really starting to think outside the box when it comes to web design in general, but specifically navigation menu design. I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that we have more flexibility with designs because of things like page builders, such as Elementor, giving us the freedom to do what we want without having to know how to code PHP. Before we had things like Elementor, we were either reliant on our themes design or we would have to hand code those menus in order to get something that looked really different than what was out there. People are really starting to break out from that traditional look of having the logo on the left and simple text links on the right for the navigation menu. It's really a great time to be a website designer. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with that basic menu style where the logo's on the left and the text links are on the right. I know I've definitely used that a lot in previous designs and it works. So if it's not broke, you might not have to fix it, but I wanted to get more creative with this video and start to think outside of the box and come up with a few different menu designs that you could easily create if you're using Elementor Pro as a way to get the creative juices flowing and hopefully inspire you. So I already went ahead and designed three different menus and I'm going to show you how I created those menus right now. Let's take a look at the first menu that I've designed. If we click on the hamburger icon, you can see that this is what pulls up. We have our navigation menu over on the left. I have some cool rollover effects on these buttons. And then we just have a simple image on the right hand side. So this is actually a pretty simple layout, but you definitely wanna be able to achieve this look using Elementor's navigation widget. What we have to do here is use the pop-up widget that's built into Elementor. You can create custom pop-up windows. That's what I did here. And if you're thinking, oh my gosh, this sounds like it's pretty complicated, trust me, it's not. If you are even a little bit familiar with how to use Elementor, you can create this and I'm going to walk you through all the steps right now. I've opened up this pop-up menu in Elementor. In order to access this area, you would go to templates and then pop-ups. And from there, you would either create a new pop-up window or you would edit one that you've already created. For this, I did make the container full width. And in order to do that, you want to go to the settings, which are the general settings for the pop-up window itself. From here, you can adjust the width. So I put it as a 100 VH, so that's the vertical width, just to make sure that it was full screen. And then I also adjusted the positioning so that it was center top. I do have a close button showing. You can toggle that off and on. You'll see over on the right hand side, when I toggle that, it does appear and disappear. For the entrance animations, I did a fade in up and then the exit animation, I did a fade out down. There are a lot of different ones to choose from, so feel free to play around with this. As you can see, we have a lot of different ones in here that are already inside of Elementor. So a really nice feature that they add that. And for the pop-up settings, this is pretty much all I did in terms of layout settings, but I did go to style and changed up a couple things just with the close button. I changed the 
positioning of it so that it was in that top right corner. You can adjust these sliders for the vertical and horizontal position. You also have the ability to adjust the color on normal and on hover if you wanna adjust that. And you can change the size by adjusting this slider here. Now let's move on to the layout itself. So it is a two container layout. And by container, I mean I am using the new Flexbox containers that are built into Elementor. They're still kind of in the beta version, so you might not be using this. You can totally do this with the old version. I am just using the new version because this is kind of like my testing site. I want to play around with things. I want to get familiarized with it. So that's why I am using that. But know that you can use the old version with sections and containers just the same. In the left hand side, I added buttons. So I didn't add an actual navigation menu widget. I created the navigation using buttons. And I did this because I wanted to add a little more flair. Uh, if you could say to the way that these buttons look on hover, I wanted to have them skew a little bit and just do something a little more fun. So I could easily do that with a button widget. So for the buttons, I just styled them to be pretty simple, just text looking links. And I removed any background colors, borders, stuff like that. So it just really looks like text. And then on hover, I added a different color and that's when I added the hover animation of skew forward. So that's what gives that cool effect. And I just did that for all of the different buttons in my navigation. Now on the right hand side, I just added an image that I found uh, through the theme that I installed. Um, you can obviously add any image that you want and there's many images as you want. You can even do background images if you wanted to play around with that, do some really cool effects. Um, I just wanted to keep this kind of simple and not go too crazy. There's obviously a lot that you can do, uh, but I think that you do wanna keep your navigation pretty straightforward if you can. You don't wanna add too many things that could be confusing to users, uh, but this is just something different and does give a little more of that custom look. So if we preview this, you can see it slides in nicely, all the links slide in, and then if you click the X, it slides down really nicely as well. So that's what we have going on for the first menu. I think it looks really good on desktop. Let's take a look and see what it looks like on tablet and mobile because obviously those are things that we have to worry about with navigation. So let's open our responsive settings switch to tablet. I just have it stacking left to right still. We just kind of shortened the columns up a little bit. And then on mobile, I have the columns reversed. So the image is at the top and then our links are down below. Still does the same thing, just everything's stacked on top of each other. I think that this works pretty well. This is definitely something that I could see myself using on a project in the future. Something that's a little more customized, gives a little more flair and creativity to the site. Before I move on to the second menu that I've designed, let me show you how I set up this menu to appear in Elementor Pro. What we have to do is edit our header. So I have that opened up in Elementor. You can see that I have my logo on the left and then a hamburger menu icon on the right. If we click on that, you'll see that the icon box opens up. I've uploaded an SVG so I can have a custom icon. And down here is what we wanna pay attention to. You can see that I have this linking to a pop-up. Let me just X that out and show you how I got there. So this by default is where you would put in a standard link. But if you click this dynamic tags button here, it gives you all of these different options. If we scroll down, we'll want to go to where it says actions and click pop up. And then from here, we'll click in this area and then the action will be to open the pop up. And then from here, we'll want to type in the name of the pop up that we created. So I'm going to put in menu and you can see that 
both my menu drop downs uh, come up because I designed two of them. So you just wanna select the appropriate pop up in there and you're good to go. Once you hit update, you'll see that when you click on this icon, it will open up the pop-up window that I just showed you. So let me just preview this and show you how it works. So if we click on this, you can see it's working the way that I showed you previously. Let's take a look at the second menu that I've designed. We're still using that same hamburger icon, but when we click on this menu, the pop-up looks a lot different. We have our links on the left, just like before. They are doing some different animations though on hover. And on the right hand side, I thought it would be a good opportunity to add contact information because people are often looking for that when they click on a menu. So having it front and center could be helpful. I also added the close button in the center. This was something that I saw on a website a little while ago. I can't remember the name of the website or I would have linked it down below, but I thought it was really cool and different. So I wanted to try it for myself. So let me get into how to design this menu. So I have it opened in Elementor, and again, we want to make sure that we have the full width uh, on the pop-up window itself. We do that by going to our settings. Just like before, we wanna set this to 100%. And I do have the overlay and the close button sh showing up on this one. In the previous one, I didn't have the overlay, but those are things that you can toggle on and off. And I do have a fade in down animation for the entrance and for the exit, I have fade out up and I adjusted the animation duration down here. Also did a couple different things in terms of styling on this style tab. I changed the close button to make it in the center. I also changed the size and the background color of that. These again are things that you can play around with and adjust to your needs. On the left hand side, I used the same button widget to create the navigation. Uh, with this, I did the animation on hover called hang. I believe that's what it's called. Let me just double check. Yes, hang is the animation. I just thought this was a cool effect. Um, I made it pretty simple, just a color change, but that hang hover animation just gives it a little bit extra flair. Uh, on the right hand side, I just kept it pretty simple with the text just, you know, for the address and the email and phone number are clickable links and these social media icons as well are clickable. So this I would say is definitely a simpler layout, but still can be pretty effective. And I think including contact information is kind of a cool way to just get your information front and center for people. Another thing that you might wanna do in this area is add a sign up for an email subscription. If you have an opt-in or something, that could be a good way to get email sign up. So there's a lot of different things that you can do and Elementor makes it pretty easy, especially with the pop-up widget because you can add all the widgets that you want, all the same widgets that are available in Elementor Pro are available for your pop-ups. So let's take a look at what this is looking like on tablet and mobile. On tablet, everything just shrinks, but it's still the two columns. And then on mobile, we have the links at the top and then our location and the social media icons down below. And for that, Close icon, I just moved it over to the right. It would be kind of silly, I think, to have it in the center on mobile. Doesn't really make much sense, so I put it on the right. And what's cool about Elementor, again, is that it's really easy to adjust those settings for specific devices. If we go to settings and then back to that style tab on the close button, you can see that the vertical and horizontal position now has this mobile icon if you wanted to switch between tablet and desktop, you would just click those. So when you have that set up, it only affects things on mobile. So pretty cool. For our third menu, we have something that looks completely different. We have a three column layout, 
The text links are going vertically. We have the logo in the center and then a call to action button on the right. So this is a completely different style for the exact same links as the previous two menus. Now for this, I created a completely different header. So I'm going to show you how I did that right now. I'm just going to go to edit with Elementor and I'm going to click on this vertical nav header that I've designed. Now you can see we have our three column layout on the left hand side. Instead of using buttons for this or the navigation menu, I actually used an icon list because I wanted to add this little icon with the parallel lines. So I thought that was the easiest way to achieve this was by using a list. And I use lists a lot for navigation menus because they give you a bunch of different options and as far as the widget is concerned everything is contained within one list widget versus having to individually click so it does make things a little bit easier um, so if we just go to one of these elements you can see that we have the text as home and then the icon i just uploaded an svg to create that and then you can see i did that for all of the other ones uh, if we go to style, you can see that I just adjusted the space between for the icon itself. I adjusted the color and the hover and the size of the icon. And under text, I did the same thing. I adjusted the text color, the hover, and the text indent. Under typography, I just changed the size of the text. So a couple different things that you can do in terms of customizing a list. These work really well for navigation menus if you don't want to use the navigation widget. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then for the middle section, I just added a heading to this, styled it up, and the button, same thing. I just dragged over a button widget, gave it some styling. Uh, I think that this looks really modern and clean and can work really well for a navigation menu. The actual container itself, I made sticky so that it will stick to the top of the page. In order to do that, you just want to go to advanced and then go to motion effects and have the sticky on. I have it sticking to the top and you can adjust if it sticky on desktop, tablet, or mobile, you can just toggle these off and on. Let's take a look at what this looks like on tablet and mobile versions as well. We'll go to our responsive mode on tablet. I just have everything again, kind of shrunk down like I did for the two previous versions. And then on mobile, I have things flipped around. One of the things that I really like about the flex containers is that it makes flipping three column layouts a lot easier because you kind of have the ability to adjust things where you want. So now I have this modern interiors logo at the top, the button in the middle, and then the text links underneath. So works really well. Really excited to use more of the flex containers once it becomes a stable version. It's still kind of in beta. They're still working out some bugs, but so far I really like it. What do you guys think about the flex container? Have you tried it? Are you into it? Is it something that you're waiting until it comes out of the testing mode to use? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today's video. I hope that you learned something and you got inspired to do something more creative with your own navigation menu. Leave a comment down below as to which design was your favorite. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.